In the same exact way that two masses will feel a force due to one another as a result of their mass, two electric charges will also feel an electric static force due to one another as a result of their electric charge. Now, if we make the assumption that these two charges are point charges and that these two point charges are stationary, then Coulomb's law describes the electric static force that two charges feel as a result of one another. And it's given by the following equation. So this equation is known as Coulomb's law. So let's suppose we have two point charges that are stationary and which are separated by a distance d. Now point charge 1 has a charge given by q1 and point charge 2 has a charge given by q2. Then the force that each one of these stationary point charges feels as a result of the other charge is given by this equation. Force is equal to the product of k, a constant, multiplied by q1, the charge of point charge 1, multiplied by q2, the charge of point charge 2, divided by the distance between them squared. Now, the force that point charge 1 will feel as a result of point charge 2 is given by this quantity. And the force that point charge 2 feels due to point charge 1 is given by this quantity. So in this case, our two electric charges are opposite. So that means they will attract one another and the force will be an attractive force. Now, what is the relationship between these two forces? So, by the third law of motion, these two forces will be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So, these two forces are action-reaction forces. So, force that point charge 1 feels as a result of point charge 2 is equal to the negative of the force that point charge 2 feels due to point charge 1. So we're assuming going this way is positive and going that way along the x-axis is negative. Now the magnitude of these two forces will be the same and is given by the following equation. Now once again, this law only applies for point charges that are stationary and the force in such a case is known as an electrostatic force. Now notice this force, this equation looks very much like the equation of the law of universal gravitation which states that any two masses m1 and m2 will feel a force due to one another given by the following equation. So our constant in this case is the gravitational constant g and in these cases our masses are m1 m2 and notice the distance between those masses is also squared just like the distance is squared in coulomb's law now two very important uh, distinctions should be made about coulomb's law so unlike the law of universal gravitation in which the force is only an attractive force Coulomb's law describes not only attractive forces, but repulsive forces as well. So if these two point charges had the same exact charge, that means they would repel one another and the two forces would point in the opposite directions. So not only does Coulomb's law work for attractive forces, it, only, it also works for repulsive forces. Now another distinction is that for Coulomb's law, the charge could be positive or negative. So there are two types of charges. While for this case, there's only one type of mass. So two types of electric charges exist and only one type of mass exists. Now, what exactly is this constant K? Well, the constant K is given by the following quantity. 8.99 multiplied by 10 to the 9 newtons per meter squared divided by Coulomb squared, where Coulomb is simply the charge or the unit for our electric charge. 
Now, K, the constant, is often written in terms of another constant known as the permittivity of free space. And it's given by the following symbol, and it has the following value, 1 divided by 4 pi multiplied by k. So if we multiply out these values and solve this fraction, we get 8.85 times 10 to negative 12 Coulomb squared divided by Newtons multiplied by meters squared. Now, let's briefly discuss the charge of an electron. So, one electron has a charge of negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. And this is the smallest possible charge found in nature. And any greater charge must be an increment of this value. So, we can never gain or lose half an electron's worth of charge. We have to gain increments of this quantity. So this basically means that charge is quantized. So let's look at the following example. Suppose two charges, Q1, that has a charge of positive 100 microcoulombs and point charge 2 that has a charge Q2 equal to 1 microcoulomb are a distance z apart. Which point charge exerts a larger force on the other point charge? So here we have our diagram Q1 and Q2. And they're both point charges and their distance z apart. Now we know from this fact that the force that point charge 1 will feel as a result of point charge 2 and the force that point charge 2 will feel as a result of point charge 1 will have the same exact magnitude because these forces are action-reaction forces. And so that means they will have the same magnitude but will be opposite in direction. So whatever the quantity of force is, it will be exactly the same. So we si if we knew what the z value was, we could simply plug in our two charges, we can plug in our constant k, and we can plug in our z value. And that would give us not only this force, but it will also give us this force. They would have the same magnitude, but they would be opposite in direction.